Hello, and thank you for being here for my talk. I'll be giving a sample of our work in computer modeling with special emphasis in biodynamo, simulate systems in biomechanics and cancer biology. I'm Vasilis Ovarakis, and I'm an associate professor with the University of Cyprus, while I'm also affiliated with UCL in London and the Jean Paulimont Foundation in Lisbon. It's widely accepted that in vitro and in vivo models are being used as reductionist approaches to understand the pathology of, of diseases such as cancer. However, mathematical and conditional models also referred as in silico models are becoming increasingly useful since they can be employed to understand the pathology of diseases. Uh, and silico can simulate cell scale and tissue and organ scale biomechanics, the delivery of drugs and the toxicities that come with it the effect of ionizing radiation treatment or other novel modalities such as plasma. Municipal models with laboratory models and medical imaging can be used for new hypothesis testing, new experiments and procedures for diagnosis, certification and prognosis. As such, they can greatly contribute to the detection of animal testing and clinical trials. As highlighted here, I will outline this talk in silico approaches to model cancer cell behavior and tissue biomechanics to investigate the effect of therapeutic strategies. As far as in silico modeling is concerned, the literature in the field is vast in biomedicine. There are several excellent review articles that lay out the different categories of models based on the scale concern, from the atomistic to the molecular level, the subcellular and cellular level, the tissue level, up to the organ and full body level. The silico models we are developing, however, are indicated with this pink bracket on the left. Basically, we build agent-based models to simulate in vitro systems and find element methods to simulate in vivo animal models in the pathophysiology of human organs. To simulate and understand what happens at the cell scale, we are building the biodynamo platform for agent-based modeling, or ABM in short. Agent-based modeling is a numerical method used to model systems, biology, materials, society, finance, etc., which assumes autonomous interactive agents as discrete ent entities. Agents can be denoted as particles to represent cells or segments to represent neurites or vessels, as shown on the graph to the left. Agents, here in it is cells, reside in space following the enough lattice uh, approach, with cell behavior being determined by rules we define as Markov process. In short, um, a Markov process describes a sequence of possible events in which the probability of each event depends only on the state attained in previous events. So here we model explicitly cell behavior for mitosis, death, migration, secretion, or uptake of biochemical substances and others. The first example I'd like to demonstrate using ABM with biodynamo is that of the in vitro treatment of melanoma cancer cells using cold atmospheric pressure plasma or and, chemo or and chemotherapeutic agent, in this case, doxorubicin. For those not familiar with, the, with cold atmospheric pressure plasma jet, uh, it is in principle electrical discharges generated by applying high voltages in noble gases, as illustrated at the figure on the left, which depicts a helium plasma jet from inside the electric tube. In this study, we consider in vitro experiments on murine melanoma cancer cells, casual in RPMI medium, inside multi-wall plates. Apart from the unobstructed cell culturing experiments, that is to say the control ones, three treatment scenarios were carried out as well. First scenario, the RPMI medium was subject to plasma treatment initially, and then cells were cultured in it. Second scenario, the melanoma cells were exposed to doxorubicin only. And finally, in the third treatment scenario, cells cultured in RPMI medium were exposed to doxorubicin and then to plasma jet for 15 seconds. As seen in the plot to the right, following 48 hours of incubation, the control population of melanoma cells grow, grows approximately 20 times. Then we build using biodynamo an agent based model where a cell can grow and mature, can divide and can die. These mechanisms, in principle, were controlled by respective probability parameters. However, we assume that the probabilities for cell mitosis and apoptosis were modulated with respect to the drug and its concentration. On the contrary, and in view of relevant biological evidence, we let in the model for plasma to affect melanoma cell apoptosis only. In the first treatment scenario, 
where the medium was subjected to plasma before culturing in the cells. If you plot out the ratio of apoptosis to mitosis probability as extracted from the simulations, and we compare it with the control. As seen for low exposure times to plasma radio, ratio R increases at higher exposure times, obviously. In the second scenario, though, with doxorubicin treatment only, shown in the middle, the ratio R increases slightly above the control mark and becomes high, much higher uh, at uh, 0.5 micromoles. Finally, in the combined treatment scenario to the right, we quantify from our simulation results the effect of plasma on the death of melanoma cells, which is more pronounced compared to that for monotreatment using toxorubicin. Moreover, using the Baidano platform, we simulated in vitro drug screening tests on human colorectal carcinomas and human breast carcinomas. However, with the control in vitro tests, we carried out experiments with different clinically approved cytostatics and at various concentrations, while cell viability was measured in the lab experimentally following standard procedures. In the biodynamo model, the probabilities for cell mitosis and apoptosis were modulated with respect to the drug and its concentration, so that in silico replicates the in vitro after 72 hours of incubation, as seen here. So different drugs and at various concentrations were tested experimentally, the data of which were used to tune the ABM, the model. The cell viability results comparison between the in vitro and the in silico is shown in the line plots here, which demonstrate overall very good agreement. Subsequently, we calculated and plotted out the cell survival probability ratio, which is defined as a fraction of normalized division probability to normalize apoptosis probability, and we drew some interesting conclusions about the drug's mode of action here. Some other examples using Biodynamo, the platform can be used as a tool to replicate in vitro systems so of mono or co-cultures of cells, etc. We simulate here on the left a 2D, a 2D scratch assay experiment on, of glioma cells, and such assays are used to understand wound healing, but also invasiveness and metastasis, metastasis in cancer. Here, after scraping the cell culture, it is subjected to a compressive load, as shown in the cartoon at the top, and simulated the effect of a mechanical stimulus in the proliferation of the glioma cells and their capacity to migrate towards closing the gap. On the right, uh, we have a different demo using Biodynamo, where we simulate the development of a three-dimensional cancer mass that mimics an in situ carcinoma, as seen at the microscopic still images. This quantitative uh, comparison shows nicely uh, the formation of the oxygen-deprived core of hypoxic cells, shown dark red, the necrotic cells, shown gray, while the outer rim of the steroid consists of active, proliferative breast cancer cells, shown green. In a separate dimension and using a different numerical method, we have been developing in silico models that couple tumor host tissue biomechanics and geogenesis blood and interstitial flow. We built a multi-scale model founded using the finite element method to interrogate the mechanisms of tumor induced geogenesis and use it to realistically reproduce 3D vascular structures in desmoplastic carcinomas. I will not go into the description of the model structure, however, details can be read in our close combined paper. The high-level info, uh, however, is that we model the balance of biochemical cues such as growth factors of oxygen, tissue mechanics and growth of cancer of the cancer mass blood flow and interstitial flow and the mechanisms of angiogenesis vascular remodeling. The mood scale model was calibrated and validated using an array of pertinent in vitro and in vivo data so as to replicate a solid tumor xenograph implanted into a immunodeficient mouse. And we wanted to establish this for an in silico drug delivery studies that follow. Next, we enhanced the in silico by plugging in a model to simulate drug delivery inside the capillaries and the extravascular space, the interstitial. Words. We ran multiple scenarios of a single bolus injection of chemotherapy and compared the treated in silico results against the treated scenario. We modulated in the simulations the pore size of the tumor vessels, as in uh, for the effect of anti VGF treatment, for example, and the drug binding rate, which is a pharmacodynamic parameter of a cytostatic uh, agent. Not worthy binding, um, finding with the simulations that the injection time of the drug is key to tumor regression but not uh, as seen on, on the line plots for low binding rates, but not for high binding rates of the drug. Next up, we presented relatively recently a new hybrid multi-scale modeling approach that couples two different modeling methods. It brings by dynamo staging based modeling used to explicitly simulate cells as shown in the previous slides with finite element method to simulate cancer dynamics at the tissue level. 
It encompasses at a microscopic level to scale the balance of chemical cues and cells density, while at the microscopic level we have the neurons, glial, and cancer, uh, cancerous glial cells most model explicitly with bad arm. So in principle, we take the solution results from the microscopic level at the previous time step, we project the solution at the microscopic level while done scaling pertinent data, and then we solve for, uh, at the cell scale dynamics using the dynamo, which we subsequently average out and upscale at the micro uh, level FE solver. And we iterate in principle this process for as many uh, uh, or as many time steps to assume the simulation. Despite this was built, however, to simulate an in situ of vascular glioblastoma development, you can generalize, of course, to other multi-scale biomechanics problems and include more biological uh, phenomena involved in cars development. In this animation, as we go from A to E, we zoom out from the simulation domain in order to visualize the cell dynamics produced by the ABM simulations of the hybrid model. In F, we have a horizontal slice of the finite element model, the contour of which depicts the oxygen deficiency in the tissue, where gray means full oxygenation and black means oxygen deprivation. The finite element mesh is made transparent for illustration purposes and consists of about 4,000 tachydera elements. It is important uh, to highlight here that the total number of cells throughout the dynamo simulation raised about a bit less than a million. However, we had uh, we had uh, had we had to model the, and populate the entire 3D domain with cells, and and to keep, of course, within physiological relevant uh, cell densities, um, within this uh, domain of eight cubic centimeters, it would require simulating roughly 600 to 8 million agents, uh, which is a huge computational workload. In this slide, uh, we compare the hybrid model simulation of an aggressive glial blastoma on the left to that of an invasive one on the right. The line plots on the, of the brain tumor volume depict the development over time, while it, in subfigures with label A, we show the cell dynamics using bed animal of the host cells shown in green, the active or proliferative cancer cells shown in orange, the necrotic ones in dark blue. And as I get close to the end of my presentation, um, we demonstrate here an in silico model in an attempt to build a digital twin of a lab mouse model. This example shows a full-scale tumor growth, vascular modeling, and drug delivery simulation of, of a neuron cancer model, the data of which were published by the paper of Disposito et al. Colorectal uh, tumor, uh, here um, we have colorectal tumor xenograph for immunocompromised mice that were allowed to grow for two weeks approximately, and then treated with a vascular destructive agent and labeling used to highlight the tumor vascular and fight cell perfusion. Subsequently, mice were sacrificed and tumors were scanned and visualized using uh, op optical projection tomography as shown in these very nice graphics. Next, we fed the data to our validated multi scale cancer model she shown a few slides back. And we simulated, on, uh, as you can see on the left, the intravenous administration of a single bonded injection of a monoclonal body that blocks angiogenesis. While on the right, we simulated the delivery of spherical uh, liposomes containing 5FU that is attributed to stopping the production of DNA in cancer cells. You can see very nicely in these animations the tumor development and vascular modeling over a period of 12 hours. The misty cloud here represents the drug uh, that has bound with cancer cells. Uh, here on this, uh, on those, uh, on that slide, on the first column we have top views of the tumor cross section in the vascular uh, network that depict the in silico predicted drug concentration that has been bound to the cancer and the surrounding host cells. On the second column, the non bound or free drug distribution pattern is shown. While on the third column we have the distribution of the decision fluid pressure and the velocity mind shift. Uh, the bottom contour plot though. Uh, shows very nicely the hot spots of interstitial fluid flow occurring at the vicinity of the tumor that work as a deterrent to the delivery and the convection of, uh, of a drug towards the tumor. Now to wrap up, hope you enjoyed the presentation of the different models we are developing to simulate cancer, angiogenesis, the effect of drugs, and other therapeutic methods against neoplasia. The models have been tailored to describe the biological mechanisms involved, and we have successfully attempted to bridge the scales. Finally, the in silico models were involved and informed and calibrated using multiple data from in vitro as well as in vivo sources. Thank you for your attention.